Hey guys, so Hannah and I did a film a while back all about the world's weirdest science studies. Yeah, and we asked you for your suggestions and you came up with some absolute classics in the comment section. I'm going to start with this one. This was suggested by Jonathan Ligo. Mm -hmm. Nice one, thanks very much. It's called The Collective Motion of Moshers at Heavy Metal Concerts. It was written by two grads from Cornell University. Okay. Um, Did they actually go to a heavy metal concert? Yeah, so I read about that actually. Really cool story. Uh, one of the authors went with his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. She requested that they didn't go in the mosh pit. And that would be me. And because he was outside of it, he kind of had this epiphany and could see what was going on inside. <laughs> I love your thinking math and science when you're at a heavy metal concert. It's amazing. Of course. Um, so. Never off the clock. <laughs> well, of course. If you're a scientist, you're always a scientist. Um, given that it is a science paper, though, did yeah. they define what it means to be they at did. a heavy metal concert? Yeah, they did. Okay. Definitions in abundance. Mm -hmm. uh, a heavy metal concert is defined as an environment which combines loud, fast music, details, 130 decibels, mm -hmm. 300 beats per minute, <laughs> FYI, uh, synchronised with bright, flashing lights and frequent intoxication. So they looked at those of YouTube videos of mosh pits and they analysed mm. and they tracked the positions of the different moshes inside it. They used something called particle imagery vel Im velocimetry. It's a thing that you use to track particles in liquids and gases. Okay. Um, and what they did, they found that although it was a whole load of individuals, mm. they were kind of acting as one mm. in their It's movement. like a flock of birds almost. Yeah, and they yeah. use flocking simulations, which is used for birds, fish, that okay. sort of thing, okay. to analyse it and make a model. Yeah. They use maths. Oh yeah, they use maths. You bet they use maths. Oh yeah, they use maths. Um, some brilliant approximations. Uh, they called each human mosher a simple, soft-bodied particle which they dubbed a mobile active simulated humanoid because it means masher. <laughs> that's genius, amazing. guys, genius. Um, and they found that the models match reality. See, the thing well. is that's really nice is that uh, this type of science doesn't just work for mosh pits, right? You can also use it, if you know how a crowd works, you can use it to design buildings for evacuation or stadiums for when there's crushes and all sorts of things like that. Yeah, so it might just. Another sound. application of math. Maths again yeah. for the win. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, okay, so last time. Um, I did make a little bit of a mistake. You did. Uh, when I said that a maths paper about ponytails uh, didn't have any point to it. And you guys um, very sensibly just said, uh, <laughs> hello, computer games. Yeah, all right, thanks, Craig. All right, I was wrong, <laughs> OK. Um, but this time, I feel like I have managed to find a maths paper that genuinely doesn't have any point to it whatsoever. OK. Um, and it's called Orange Peels and Fresnel Integrals. OK. And basically, what the team have done is they've taken an orange um, and they've peeled it in a spiral running down and then they've laid out the orange peel onto a table and come up with a mathematical formula for the spiral that it creates. Yeah, pointless. Yeah, genuinely pointless. Well, I think, well, maybe I, I'm happy to be corrected if I'm wrong again. But you know what, though? I still think that papers like this are good, right? Because it turns out it's a Euler spiral, it's a really lovely equation, and basically papers like this are what I live for, if I'm honest. They really are, aren't they? <laughs> you take yourself to a corner, you read that paper, Right, the, the next one uh, was sent in by Amanda Waugh. She put that down in the comments. Um, it is The Nature of Naval Fluff, nice. written by George Steinheiser in Medical Hypotheses, a proper paper. Um, love his detail mm -hmm, in this. Mm -hmm. He found out that the most abundant individual mass of a piece of lint was found to be between 1.20 and 1.29 milligrams. Mm, that's kind of disgusting, if I'm honest. I'll tell you what is disgusting is the pictures. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Um, I have done a video on belly button fluff, where it comes from. It was in a trio, the films that I did a while back, uh, included Why We Yawn and mm -hmm. Why Fart Smell. <laughs> so I'll put a link to that. The All end. the important body functions. Absolutely. Um, from Greg, but the, yeah, of course. Um, OK, so my next paper, or my last paper, rather, uh, is called <clears throat> Transgressing the Boundaries Towards a Transformative Hermeneutics of Quantum Gravity. OK. Sounds deep. <laughs> it isn't. It literally doesn't mean anything. What? Yeah, OK, so this guy, Alan Zokol, who is a serious mathematician who I work with, incidentally, um, he Fine. got a bit annoyed about the fact that loads of pseudoscience journals were publishing really fluffy, flowery research. And he wanted to see if he could write a paper about literally nothing um, and if he could get it published as long as he used flowery enough language and just because he was a big shot academic. And was it published? It was published, yeah, in the Journal of Social Text, which is a journal of postmodern cultural studies. 
everyone's favourite bedtime reading. But the thing that's quite interesting about this paper is that it's used as an experiment with students and it's found that time and time again students who are told that this paper is written by a big shot academic end up deriving way more meaning than students who just think it's written by another student. Huh. So it shows that we kind of go for reputation. Yeah, way more important. Substance. Yeah, which is it's funny actually because science shouldn't be about that at all. It should always be about what you found and not reputation. Yeah, true. <laughs> I've got a paper that's kind of similar yeah. in a way, uh, but more fun. <laughs> it's just a quick one to end on. This is it. Thank you, Christopher Ball, for putting this in the comments. Yep. Uh, it's okay. written by Doug Zonka mm -hmm. at the University of Washington. Okay. It is chicken, chicken, chicken. Chicken, chicken. What? Chicken. Chicken, chicken, chicken. Every word is chicken. <laughs> let me see, let me see. Let me it's see. genius. There are flowcharts. There are graphs. Cross. There are formulae. There are matrices. There's everything where every single word is chicken. chicken. Amazing. So how would you summarise it? Chicken. <laughs> nice. um, OK, well, thank you very much. If you've got any more uh, science papers that you want to share with us, then please feel free to put them in the comment section below. Yeah. What do you want for lunch? <laughs> Chicken. <laughs>